Good morning, Team World. I wanted to give you a demonstration of all the different ways you can search for things in SUP. Object Browser version 0.1.7- actually 1.8- beta. <clears throat> so basically I'm just going to go to the list uh, out on GitHub and I'm just going to go through its search examples and show you how they work. The first one, first one on the list is actually an, an address searching the main chain. And in SUP, the main chain is currently hard-coded to Bitcoin testnet. But the main chain can be Bitcoin or it could be any block or any altcoin uh, based on Bitcoin. We have hard coded it to Bitcoin testnet as this is just an experiment and we have a lot of testing yet to do. And we're hoping that you help us. So let's try this first search. And I'm searching for an address on Bitcoin testnet. I'll hit enter. And you'll notice that when I hit enter, my name here showed up, E-M-B-I-I -I for you. And that's because at some point I have created a profile at this address. And then you can see that it loaded all of the object associations that it found here at this address. Once, uh, uh, once you have found an address, you can also use the created uh, filter here, which will show the objects created by this address, and the own filter here, which will show the objects owned by this address, if there are any. <clears throat> That's, uh, with a future release, you'll be able to click on Profile and, and you'll be able to view more details about this profile as well as uh, have a, a place where you can send them direct messages and uh, thing, say, see things that they are posting as well. Similar to Twitter, I guess. Uh, you'll also in the future have a Mint button here, but SUP uh, until the 2.0 release will be only will be read only. Uh, the 2.0 release is coming. Uh, we'll be dropping that probably sometime in June. All right. So that's the first search uh, uh, type. We're going to go to the next on the list, which is basically searching the uh, main blockchain again. Uh, this one is searching by transaction ID. And this transaction ID actually has uh, a web page uh, uh, etched into it. So you can see it, uh, the the URL is transaction ID slash index.html. So we'll search for that. And this went out to Bitcoin Testnet and it found this web page in it uh, and it brought it to the sub browser for you. And you can see it running in there. Pretty cool. <clears throat> so this next search is we'll be searching another blockchain in this, in this one, it's a uh, side chain. And the side chain that we'll be searching is Bitcoin production. So we're using production to simulate a sidechain uh, in here uh, instead of using, uh, like, for instance, this could be like Litecoin or Dogecoin or something that, to, that, to that effect. So again, this is the short name, BTC, transaction ID, index.html. So this is also a web page, but this one is on Bitcoin production. So let's search for it. <clears throat> so this this uh, example is a fully browsable website that's been on Bitcoin production since 2014 as a demonstration of the technology. And you can see that it is uh, fully browsable within the browser. This is an interesting website. It has English and Sanskrit translations of, the, of this book. Uh, it's a fun thing for you to explore. All right, we're going to try searching for another sidechain. But this example is demonstrating using a query string along with a blockchain object. And this uh, sidechain that we're searching is Mazacoin Production. And you can tell because I have the short name MZC colon in front of it. <clears throat> and at the end of this, you can see that it has a query string that it's sending. Uh, it's sending a query string named viewer and the query string and the query string it's sending is MB for you or the data element, I guess. So we'll hit enter. And you can see my name showed up here because my name was entered in the query string. And this one on Mazacoin is actually an active Gen 2 robot card that's showing you. Uh, so let's, uh, to show you that this is actually re reading the query string, we'll just put some things in here. Sup. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. Sup. Oh, let's try the question mark. I should just print Sup! <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Anyways, well, you can have a lot of fun with this. Uh, that uh, this this Gen 2 robot card is takes any string and converts it into a robot card. That is basically a card with some 
uh, Dungeons and Dragons inspired uh, stats, uh, emojis and fades and gravity balls and things of such of such natures. All right, the next one on the list is a case sensitive keyword. So let's try that. Get this out of here. I have set up one called fake. E Oops. Fake. Oh, well, let's just do it. Let's just do it like this. You can see, oh, nothing returned because that is, you know, it's a case sensitive keyword. So we'll put in fake UFO is actually how it should be. And it's returning two of them. Uh, one is the official fake UFO keyword. And the other one is the unofficial fake UFO keyword. What does that mean? <clears throat> well, let's see what happens if we search for at fake UFO. Nothing. Hmm. If we search for fake UFO, nothing. Fake UFO. Oops. UFO. Ah. So to get so like well there's two of them well which one is the which one is the real fake ufo which one is the official fake ufo well to find that you have to type in sup colon slash slash fake ufo and it will take you to the actually registered uh, object uh and these registrations last for three years should i uh die or just decide not to register a fake ufo any longer someone else can grab that fake ufo and uh and use it. Uh, so sub fake UFO is uh, a demonstration of using the uh, domain register. Uh, something more, a more familiar format for you would, would be having a dot com at the end or some sort of dot something at the end, uh, which is how uh, HTTPS domains are. Uh, sub doesn't really care about that. It could be any kind of string in any kind of format that you'd like. So let's search, let's see what's, uh, let's see what twitter.com shows up on sub. Ooh, looks like MB owns 9 billion shares of it. <laughs> and uh, this uh, particular Twitter.com does have a URI redirection inside, but we have not turned that on because we want you to see the object. Uh, we don't want it to just redirect at the, at the moment. But at some point in the future, when you, click, when you type in this, it's going to take you to a website. <clears throat> and to kind of give, demonstrate that, I'll just put in a, a website here. Because SUP does have a fully functional browser on the inside, uh, built within it, embedded. And we will take the... We'll just go to mb.org. And you can say this is taking you to my splash page on here. Uh, let's take you to one that we can actually browse. We'll go to google.com. And uh, no, I don't want to do that. Let's do a search. So, let's see if any... See if we show up yet. Sup? Hmm. Sup? A sip of liquid. He took another sip of, sup of wine. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, let's see. So we already showed you case sensitive keywords. Ah, here we go. This one's important. At username. At user. Oh. <laughs> so one of the usernames that I have uh, that are registered are my own username. So MB for you. Search for that. <clears throat> this is going to go out and return and find all of the op, uh, all the object associations associated with this profile, and you can also see that it found the address associated with it here on the right. Uh, another one we have out here is Alan Vanderveer. Let's search for uh, Alan Vanderveer. You can see it returned all the object associations. Again, with these, you can click on the created button. It will show you all the objects created by Alan Vanderveer. Uh, the owned button will show you all the objects owned by Alan Vanderveer. And uh, coming soon will be the profile button, which will show you Alan Vanderveer's profile, which will have uh, contact information, uh, messages that he has uh, put on his uh, thread, as well as uh, messages he's uh, forwarded or, or, or <laughs> from other uh, SUP users. Uh, and if you are Alan Vanderveer and you go to the profile, you'll be able to see your private messages as well. Uh, but only if you are Alan Vanderveer. And that's how that works. Also, a future uh, button that we'll be working in SUP is this Mint button. But until SUP version uh, 0.2.0 beta, SUP will be totally read only. Uh, and we were doing that because we want you to, uh, we, want a lot of, we want a lot of help this year. We want people to test SUP and tell us uh, what they'd like in it and what's wrong with it. 
and these types of things before we actually give them a tool that lets them put things onto the blockchain. And even with the 2.0 release, SUP will still be hard-coded to reference Bitcoin testnet. We don't plan on changing that hard code reference until uh, the middle of December, when SUP 3.0-beta is released. And at that point, I will be using SUP to perform my first trade in production, and I'll be trading the yellow robot that you see in the top left corner. If you have a yellow robot in Bitcoin uh, testnet, I will give you a yellow robot in Bitcoin production. To get a yellow ro robot in Bitcoin testnet, you have to test SUP, or at least give me some sort of, you know, any kind of interaction regarding SUP and a Bitcoin testnet address, and I will send you a yellow robot up to 300, uh, the first 300 to help. All right, let's see what else we have on the list. Uh, IPFS, cool, let's try that. So IPFS, to, to find an IPFS object, uh, you'll have to use IPFS colon slash slash in front of it. That, or you can also just use capitalized IPFS colon in front of it as well, and it'll find the object. And this one uh, isn't referencing a file name. If you hit enter, what you can't see, but what I saw is it picked up uh, and it opened up a folder for me that shows all the file contents in there. Uh, so that's how that functions. Uh, let's see, sup.twitter.com, stop the boom, dun, dun. ah, search by file. Oh, this is a cool one. So, SUP, as of 0.1.8-beta, SUP has the ability to tell you the owner of a file by dragging the file and dropping it into the browser. It will go out to the blockchains, uh, the main blockchain, which again, this one is Bitcoin Testnet, and it will perform a search to see if that file has ever been uh, registered, and it will bring back the current owner of that file. Uh, if, the, uh, if it does find references with that no longer have owners, it won't return them. And the ownership of these can be, uh, can be transferred. All right, so let's grab a file from my desktop that I have already. Uh, let's see. Registered. And to register file, you act, you're basically putting the first, uh, you're putting a keyword onto the object when you create it. And the keyword is the first, is created by the first 20 bytes of the file itself. Oh, there's the file, all right. So I'm gonna drag this, oops, root. I'm gonna drag this file onto the screen. You can see that my little icon here. And when I let go of this, it's going to go search for the file on Bitcoin testnet. Boom, it happened that quickly. And if you open this up, well, you can see right here who is the current owner of this file. And this is something pretty, pretty revolutionary, I think. <laughs> I ha I've been using the lots of different NFT platforms, and I haven't seen one where you can, uh, where where you can take the file if you have it, and it will tell you the owner of it. Uh, so that's pretty rad. It should prevent right-click saving uh, into the future, knowing whether or not. Uh, the, the object that you are trading is actually authentic and from the person that you expect it is from. All right, that is an example of the current search abilities with SUP as of SUP version 0.1.8-beta. All right, have a great day.